Come here, Oso. People want to see you. Oso. Come here. You're a big dog. Let him bite, honey. Oso, come here. You can get through there. Okay. Okay, people have been wanting to see Oso, so Oso's you know, deigned to come in the greenhouse to take a look at what I'm doing. Uh, nothing here to eat, Oso. Uh, this morning we're working some live bearers. This is a species of Zephophorus type of sword tail. It's Zephophorus alvarezi. Uh, we noticed we've had this fish quite a while. Uh, they did moderately well. We lost a, uh, a lot of sailfish, but we, you know, we saved enough fish to generate a couple breeding colonies. Uh, and we've got oh, well over 100 juveniles that will be ready to sell at some point. Uh, what we noticed about this fish is that uh, some of the males and females are freckled and some aren't. So we're I'm separating the two. I'm trying to see whether uh, I, I can breed a non-freckled one uh, and a freckled one. Uh, and ha and have them separate. Uh, things kind of got messed up because of the storm, so I uh, I don't I'm sort of starting over on this. I'm going to get some of these fish and put them in a jar so that you can see what they look like. These are the non uh, some of the non-freckled ones. Let's see if I got a male. Yes. Okay. So you need to move out of Susie's way. Uh, Kind of wipe that water off a bit here. That's a male. He has uh, those dark bars, uh, three dark bars on the side are called par marks, which some uh, live bearers have. Uh, there's a kind of a freckled female. I probably should pull her out. And then the, this female is ready to drop. Uh, See, she has no freckles. She's got some striping. It's a nice fish. I would normally, I'm going to purge this male. He's too little. I don't like him. Uh, that's why I go with larger males. So we're, this breeding colony is going to consist, I don't have all of them out of the bucket, of two males and six females. Not very large, but still a good start. And as you can tell, couple of those females really grab it. I like the red dorsal on this female, and the male has a nice dorsal. So I'm going to put them back in their bucket before they go in. Right. Well, let's take a look at this guy. He's difficult to catch. Let's put him in the jar. Did I get him in there? Yeah. He's a nice big male. Some good color. He does not have the par marks like his uh, competitor has, but he's a nice, nice fish and he's big. So I'm going to put them in that bucket and we will uh, set them up in a breeding colony shortly. And I guess I'll, I need to uh, go and check on the status of those. And what we'll do is do another segment on this in just a second. Okay, let's take a look at some of the freckled ones. We have more of those. Oops, I just lost the fish. Uh, we have this breeding colony is going to be four males and 25 females, uh, 26 females, since I just added one. And you can see this is this male has freckles all over him. This male, not quite as much. That's a female with uh, freckling. Uh, another female with some freckling. So I'm going to see just how hereditary this, how genetic this uh, trait is, uh, and keep these two lines separate for a while. Okay, they're going to go back. I'm going to go down and check on their vats, and then we'll film putting them back in to their home, new homes. So, Okay, before we put the Zephophorus alvarezi sword tails up, I want to show you uh, our cherry shrimp, red cherry shrimp, Susie's been going through those. Uh, she selects breeders. And Susie, if you'll show, these are potential breeders. But we polyculture these with 
uh, our live bearers. And what we do is put 30 or 40 shrimp in with them, make sure we have a couple males. And these are our shrimp that are going to be sold. They're good, but uh, uh, not up to her standards for breeding. And then these are shrimp that are culls, which will get fed to our cichlids. Uh, they, so you always have a certain percentage. You can tell that was a fairly minor percentage of uh, shrimp that don't color up. Uh, okay, now I'm going to go down, get the bats ready, and then we'll talk. We'll uh, show show you how we set up live bear breeding bats. Okay, we are on. We're in greenhouse two. This is row F. Uh, Susie, if you can show that label. I'm going to put the non freckled Alvarezes in uh, their old home, 2F21. That's the 21st bat in this row, in row F. And what I'm going to do, uh, this is a what we call a fry cage. These are set up for the 55 gallon tanks. This is a uh, quarter inch aquaculture mesh. Uh, we make sure it's aquaculture rated so, uh, so it doesn't have anything that would be toxic to fish. Inside it is a what we call a cichlid hotel, which is a piece of two inch PVC for weight because this uh, netting will float. And then six cylinders of, uh, of the qu quarter inch netting uh, fastened around it. This provides uh, some shelter for the fry uh, when they have them. The adults usually aren't very cannibalistic once they're used to fry, but when we first set the vats up, there aren't any fry in and them, so we give the fry a place to go. The other thing we do, I'm filling this fat, the other thing we do is add uh, some hornwort outside the, the fry cage to provide additional uh, cover. Okay, this is our batch of uh, two male and six female non-freckled uh, Zephophorus alvarezes. And I'm just going to pour them in there. That bat will fill up. Uh, over the next half an hour and the you know, water will, Susie, if you'll come show this, the water will overflow out these strainers. The strainers stop the fish from going through and uh, into the gutters. Some fry will go through, but they just become feral fish. Uh, we don't worry about that. Okay, we're going to come down here and set up the freckled breeders. I'm going to again put a fry cage and cichlid hotel in there. Put a little bit of hornwort in, and this is a much larger batch, if I remember right, it's four and 26, something like that. Four males and 26 females. I'm going to just pour them in there. Oh, that one wanted to play salmon and jump, but it bounced back in. Okay, then, yeah, that's uh, that 2F24. Used to have an ancestress in it. That's an old label, obviously, since we lost all our ancestress. We were polyculturing ancestors with our live bearers. Uh, speaking of polyculture, Susie will come back uh, after we're done with this and put in each one of these three vats that we're doing. We'll add 30 to 40 uh, good red cherry shrimp uh, as breeders. And you know, when we process these fish again in three to four months, we'll also process the shrimp. That way we get two two things out of one vat. Uh, Susie likes uh, floor space that generates a lot of income. Okay, then this is a, somewhere north of 100 uh, juveniles or a bunch of tiny fry in there. I'm not gonna put a cage in with them. I'm just going to pour them in. Make sure everybody got out and they didn't. There's a little, nice little red cherry shrimp. I'm gonna put him in there. Uh, I'm going to throw some hornwort in that bat. If I had thought about it earlier this uh, morning, we would have shown you how we break these vats down, but we'll do that with uh, 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 another video, a long video that Carl videos. Susie's doing the videoing right now. Uh, pan over to Stormy. Stormy's working on some vats. Stormy, say hi. Storm, uh, what happens is uh, Stormy uh, nets out the, the vats 
uh, gets as many fish out as possible, puts a siphon on it, and lets it siphon out through a net so she can capture any that goes through the siphon. And then she uh, uses a 10-inch brine shrimp net to uh, clean the, the mom, the gunk out of the bottom of it. And then we set it up. And we'll show you that entire process since people are asking about it. Uh, by the way, Stormy uh, has become a celebrity on the Internet. Has, she has. Uh, you'll, you'll see the video. You don't have to hear it right now. Uh, she uh, is getting uh, comments from all around the world. Uh, and uh, uh, some of them are, are interesting. <laughs> Good fish keeping.